What's up, everyone? How you guys doing? Welcome to the show. We have news coming out of Sturges. We're going to let you know how many DUI arrests there's been, as well as news on the uh, Hells Angels. Yes, I know we've been covering them a lot, but hey, they're in the news, man. What can I tell you? I can't hold back on that stuff. Uh, if they're in the news, we're going to bring it to you. Uh, also, man, uh, sad state of affairs today. Sad state of affairs. Chicago lit up. Yeah, the Magnificent Mile, the Gold Coast. Sad state of affairs. It's beautiful down there, too. Uh, being from Chicago, seeing what was going on last night, it was like, really, enough's enough. You cannot use the pretext of this dude up in Minneapolis any damn more. It's getting old. You have professionals getting behind these groups with the money, the whole nine yards. And it's time for regular Americans, which they're starting to come out now and say enough's enough, to call this what it is. The media protects them. The left protects them. There was one guy today I couldn't even believe came out and uh, went against them, and that was Jackson, man. I thought he'd never come out and say anything. So, let's get on this topic before we go to the news, because I'm kind of upset because it happened in Chicago. Portland's been going for 64-something days now, you know. If you cannot see that this is about socialism or communism from that party, something's wrong with you. If you cannot see it for yourself, what's going on, something's wrong with you. It's funny. People will always ignore what's going on until it comes to their country or till it comes to their city. Then they don't ignore it so much. Then they start crying and whining and whining and crying. Kind of reminds me of bikers that uh, claim, well, police don't profile. Well, until it happens to you, then all of a sudden you're crying and whining about it. What is happening right now before us is an attempted coup. An attempted coup. That with that mail-in ballot crap, which everybody knows, is a joke. If you can go out there and protest and riot and act a fool, you can get to a voting booth. I am so sick of the weak-minded individuals in this country. Weak-minded. Because they get led around by the pecker. They can't think for themselves. A lot of people ask me, well, why do you bang on that movement? Because it ain't a movement. It's a cover for what's going on right now. You even have blacks leaving the damn freaking movement because it was been taken over. My question is, is it now time to start fighting back? How do you, you know what, if you're from the Chicago area, how do you feel watching Macy's on the mile being broke into? They were loading up trucks. Loading up trucks. How do you feel about that? That's one of the beautiful things about Chicago. And next thing you know, you got a bunch of idiots running around breaking windows and doing stupid crap in the name of protests. And you got Beetlejuice, that ugly freaking, yeah, I ain't gonna even go off on what she is. But you got her sitting there doing nothing. Then you got Kim Fox, the damn uh, DA, letting everybody out for felonies. This is no longer about debate. This is about taking the country back. America is not this right now. And do you notice that all this jive is happening in democratic controlled cities? Now I got some haters out there that you know, they bash on with my views and stuff. Can you give a legitimate argument about why this is happening? 
why you think that this is the right thing to do. They can't. They never can give legitimate arguments other than I hate the orange man. That's their big argument. And they don't even know why they hate him. Well, I can kind of figure out why. Because you watch the stupid news. Because you can't distinguish between what's been done and what hasn't. And you listen to their propaganda on their soapboxes. Let's look at San Francisco for a minute. One of the highest, highest homeless rate in the country. Who runs it? The speaker. She don't care about the people. They care about power. And you schlucks are the ones who give it to them. Election after election. I wonder how uh, the citizens of Portland are feeling right now. You know, even though I flew out there once and it's a crap hole, uh, it might as well be the south side, west side of Chicago, uh, there are citizens out there that work hard every day, and now they're being held captive in their own houses while these liberal idiots let them do it. Where's your explanation of why that's happening? Should citizens be held in their apartments like it's a Gestapo tactic or something? I, I just want to know. You people who call yourselves bikers, who vote for them, let me know. Let me know why. And don't use that union BS. You know, you got fat boy over there that cries and whines all the time. Uh, I ain't going to even get in who he is, but I'm a union guy. I always vote Democrat. You stupid fat fuck. That's what I can say. You're an ignorant bastard. You always were. I vote Democrat because I'm a union. Half the freaking union people I know, more than half, you have 98% don't even vote for them. It's only the union bosses that make the endorsements. The members don't care. And I'm a union supporter. Again, most unions I know, the members won't vote for them. Why? Because that's not the party for the workers anymore. You got a bunch of communists over there now. You got a bunch of socialists. They took over the whole Democratic Party. And what are we seeing right now? And I know I'm into politics and we're going to get into biker news. A lot of good stuff today. But with this opening monologue, I just felt the need to say, you know what? What the hell? Seeing Chicago's mag mild destroyed like that? I just want to know, where's the excuses? I want to see who's going to cover for these people. I bet you when you scroll through the comments on half the platforms, you're going to see a bunch of ignorant ass tree hugging leftists is what you're going to see. They will not be able to correlate any type of argument whatsoever about what's going on right now. All they're going to be able to do is blame Orange Man. That's what they always do. I never, you know what, I can't even believe I used to call myself a blue dog Democrat, man. Because I never seen so many people led around by the peckers as I have now in these days. I seen a poll the other day, over 50% of Z generationers think socialism's the way to go. Why? Because you have these ignorant ass teachers trying to teach kids. And parents ain't stepping in. And saying, no, that ain't happening. Now you got them teaching uh, uh, gay rights and all that stuff in history? Give me a damn break, man. Enough. Enough. They're trying to brainwash your kids and you're letting them have it. And that's the reason why you see all these crying and whiners. Uh, yesterday's segment, we actually showed how Antifa was being pushed out of the Colorado town. Maybe it's time, you know, to do what they do. You see them all dressed up in black, give them a black eye. Because right now, the country we know is being stolen. It's no longer about rights and racism. They use racism every damn chance they can get. Trust me, I've been called it every, for a month now. And it's like, whatever, dude. That's what I have to say. I treat you right if you're cool. If you're not, you're a freaking schluck. That's the way I treat everybody.
but the arguments are just not there for their side. City's burning. Burning. Yeah, that makes a lot of freaking sense right there to stand by and let this crap happen. It really does. And why? Because people are afraid of being called racist. They're afraid to stand up and have some nuts. That's the generations we freaking raised. And what's even worse is even the older generations are not doing nothing about it. It's just freaking sickening. Let's go on to uh, the biker news, man, and we'll get more in my final thoughts later on in the show. Here we go out of Deadline.com by Peter White. Relative unknown. The wild true story of a Hell's Angels murder and witness protection set as podcast series from C-130 Originals. Interesting stuff here. It's like everybody has to make money uh, these days, doesn't it? Uh, ex and it's an exclusive. C-130 Originals is launching a new podcast that tells the story of a Hells Angels member murder and the impact it had on his family who went into witness protection. Well, if you're in witness protection, why would you want to come out of it? Go figure. Uh, the Entercom owned company, which is behind the podcast series, including Root of Evil, Once Upon a Time in the Valley, and Long May the Run, is launching Relative Unknown. Actually, come tomorrow. <laughs> come tomorrow. This is going to be hidden. It seems like the podcast, and one of the things I do like pod, about podcasts, it's like the old days of radio. You know how they used to do a storyline and stuff? It was like... Uh, a movie, but on radio. It was pretty cool. Everybody used to sit around the radio, around the fireplace, and listen to, uh, you know, something like this. It tells the story of Jackie Taylor, who was born Jacqueline Crouch, the daughter of Clarence Butch Crouch, a member of the Bandidos motorcycle gang in Texas in the 1960s, who became a Hells Angel and confessed to an unsolved murder. Ooh, all the way back from 1960. Wow. In exchange for a reduced sentence, he agreed to testify against a number of the gang members and his family was placed into WITSEC. That's witness protection. Uh, Taylor has been hidden in the program for almost 40 years. Uh, somebody needs to tell them uh, things have changed since the 60s and 70s, and, you know, I wouldn't be worrying too much. They, pr The guys now probably don't even know who this dude is. But after a strange and violent incident reveals secrets about her past, she begins a journey to find out the truth about herself and her family. Well, he's a rat if he was trying to, if he went in the wit sack, he's a rat. There you go. End of story. Don't need a known anymore. Hers is a twisted tale of darkness, murder, mystery, tragedy, and resilience, which travels uh, the, the country and lands in the most violent era of one of the country's most violent cities, 1970s Cleveland. And that's almost like, what, 40, what, 50 years, something like that ago? Uh, you know what, I think our, our hard-paying tax dollars don't need to be going to this anymore. Everything's changed. Again, they probably don't even know who the hell this guy is. Taylor can't move forward unless she reconciles with his past. And she's finally telling this story in the hopes that others don't have to live the kind of life she has. He chose to play the game. He did something. And he decided to go into the whip sack. End of story again. See, I can sum it up in like a couple minutes. You don't need all these episodes. But the, they want to do 10 episodes. Follows her journey from innocent 7-year-old in witness protection to determined adult. Ready to speak out. Relative Unknown is produced by C-13 Originals in partnership with Rumor Inc. It is exact produced and all that blah, 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 bull. Uh, similar to how we approached a cr critically acclaimed series, Rudy Evil, telling a compelling story. Uh, so basically, it is on Cadence 13. If you want to listen to this BS, go ahead and do it. Uh, but 
threw it out there. Now, let's go up north. You guys acting a fool again. Harold Carmichael out of the SunburyStar.com. No sentencing date for Hell's Angels member. A sentencing date has yet to be set for Hell's Angels Nomad Chapter member from Ottawa who has pleaded guilty to drug trafficking in Sudbury. Uh, Joshua, who was... I ain't even attempt that damn name, man. You know, my Chicago accent, I always get stuff screwed up. Nah, ain't gonna happen. Joshua is what we're gonna call it. Who was facing five uh, charges following his arrest August 1st and was in custody at the Sudbury Jail. You know what? It's always funny the northern names guys come up with Sudbury. What is it, like, named after Suds or something from uh, beer? I don't know. Pleaded guilty via video conference July 29th to cocaine possession for the purpose of trafficking. A sentencing date, which was to have been set, was not finalized in assignment court. It will now be set August 12th. Back on. While no pre-sentence report was ordered, the court heard uh, Joshua has a prior record. No! <laughs> uh, the court heard that in the summer of 2018, Niagara Regional uh, Police, Greater Sudbury Police, and the Ontario Provincial Police, my God, you guys got a lot of damn names for cops, started a joint investigation in the cocaine trafficking ring that operated across Ontario, including Greater Sudbury, dub Project Skylark. The investigations included the wiretapping last year of a network of drug traffickers in Nova Scotia and Ontario, and concentrated on the Red Devils Motorcycle Club and the Hells Angels uh, Nomads chapter. There you go, let's go again, acting a fool. <laughs> the Ontario Provincial Police Organized Crime Enforcement Bureau, uh, the Niagara Regional Police, uh, yeah, we already went through that. About 6 a.m. August 1st, 2019, search warrants were executed across the province, including five at locations in Greater Sudbury. I told you, man, cops are like busybodies. They never leave you alone. They, you you can't go out, make a little living, yeah, a little bit under the table. You know why? You know why they make drugs illegal, don't you? Because they can't tax them. They can't tax them. Like here in Illinois. We got this dispensaries. And there's so damn much money, I go to the street dealer. They tax you over here with 420, baby. They tax you. Uh, I, sh I just got another one of these. This is Bio Jesus right here. 25 bucks for a joint. Are you crapping me? One gram, that's 25 bucks. They're, they're, they're psychos here. And it's no wonder people go and get their own stuff. Uh, let's see here. Police uh, in Sudbury uh, seized about $420,000 worth of drugs. Damn, I'd be pissed losing that much. Including meth, uh, fentanyl, cocaine, and shatter. Five handguns, three long guns, and $50,000 in cash. Oh, somebody be getting that ass whooping for $50,000 getting took. Uh, seven people were arrested and charged. As a result, uh, police identified Joshua, a full uh, patch member of the Nomads chapter, as one of three targets. Wiretap showed he was involved in the sale of cannabis products ranging in price from $250 to $300 an ounce. That's pretty decent, man. You got a pretty decent street prices up there. Uh, the court also heard that in uh, 2018, he was not employed in any capacity. Well, maybe he was taking a vacation. Maybe he had a couple bucks. He's taking vacation. Uh, uh, let's see here. Or holiday. Ain't that what the Aussies call it? Holidays and Europe calls it holidays. I never got that. You guys get a lot of holidays, by the way. On August 1st of 2019, uh, the, uh, search warrant, uh, executed at his residence turned up a variety of items, including 119 grams of Coke, 105 grams of MDMA, uh, 102 grams of cannabis, and... He was Cheech and Chong and up in there, man. Two packages of cannabis edibles and other... Ain't it legal up there? Cannabis now? I don't know if it was back then on 2019 and uh, 10500 in cash. But that should just tell the government, hey, man, you need to lower your prices, man. Enough with that taxing people to get high, dude. 
That's why we still go to the streets. Easy stuff. Anyway, let's see here. The city of Sturgis spends about a million, but net gains more than a million from annual rally. This by Biker Dad. Uh, roughly eight years ago, a number of Sturgis motorcycle rally vendors were taking cash for items sold and sticking that cash in their pockets. Well, that's capitalism. Why wouldn't they? City uh, manager Danielle Isley said, the city decided to curb that activity and collect what was old. This is the same guy who led the charge to try to annex the Jack Pine Jippies uh, freaking uh, property out there because they wanted them to pay more. But they, they're ranking in a million dollars. What's wrong with these people? My God. It began when we started to see a significant amount of sales occur and reported sales did not correlate. The city started working with State Department of Revenue agents, ah, the revenueers, to make sure vendors were properly recording point of sales to accurately reflect sales, Ainsley said. Undercover officers are checking vendor sales transactions. You believe that's how far they will go to get their money in Sturges, and I cannot for any reason that I can think of why the hell would you want to go to Sturges. This is what you're supporting. It went from a nice racing rally, a party, all that good stuff into this. And you still support them. I don't get you people. I really don't. Uh, the sales tax revenue from the rally has significantly increased since about 2012 and 2013. Now because they know people are watching, everyone is using a point of sale. <laughs> I guarantee if I set up a booth up there, you guys wouldn't know what's going on. The sales tax generated in 2013 was 569,000 and it was 606 million sub or no dude you guys need to learn where to put your decimals i guess it was 606,706 in 2019 they saw a 30 to 40% increase in the first year that's a tremendous increase Ainsley said of sales tax revenue yeah, they're profiting off of that, but you still wanted to go after the Gypsy Joker. Or not the Gypsy Jokers, my fault. Jack Pine Gypsies. I better get that straight. Retrack Jack Pine Gypsies. Everybody has the same name almost. The net profit from the rally was $1,165,687. My God. It was about oh, 100,000 uh, more than the 1,075,000 collected in 2013. There you go, man. That's the kind of money you're making that town by going there. Unreal. The city's own growth and growth in rally income have allowed the city to cut the property tax rate by 22%. Maybe your uh, little town should thank bikers for that. Of course, they're the ignorant ones going there. Rally income made about 11% uh, of the city's uh, 2019 budget, but the city has likely hit the ceiling on income from the rally. Oh, BS, you'll find another way. Over the past year, uh, six years, the net, net income has been fairly consistent. Uh, they saw a substantial change in 2008. The five years prior, their net income was about 300000 uh, I think we're capping out any additional revenue we make, he said. This after the city has increased sponsorship and made changes to operate the rally more efficiently. That's what I have to say to you, man. Whatever. Anyway. Uh, we're going to go right here, right now. Uh, we're going to learn a little bit more of what's going on here. Latest report on the number of arrests and citations during the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. From Saturday morning to Sunday morning, authorities made 26 DUI arrests, which is up from last, last year at this time. They also made 17 felony drug arrests. Troopers also responded to 18 crashes, 12 of which involved injuries. Authorities also handed out more than 200 tickets. Oh, go figure, 200 tickets. And I guess they got an app that they're launching too right now. Let's take a listen here. This is going to be the 80th. This would be a great year to launch it because we can do push notices of, 
hey, uh, such and such is playing a concert at this venue tonight. So they're looking to do an app, you know, anything to do to make the money. But that is the total crashes. They got t tickets and all that stuff uh, with the start. Now, this is very saddening here. And this is where our uh, laws have really went overboard. Uh, 23 WIFR, a man serving life sentence for $30. Yeah, $30 of marijuana to be freed in Louisiana. You guys are like idiots down there. I'm not talking about the bikers. I'm talking about the government, of course. Yeah. You know, someday, you know, that things would be right. It's been almost a decade since Antoine Harris has seen his little brother. Back in 2012, Derek Harris was sentenced to life in state prison without parole over a $30 marijuana sale. Although Harris doesn't deny his brother's wrongdoing, he does not believe he had a fair sentence. That? His attorney at the time was silent, never once, like, appealed it or just... That I don't agree with it or anything. It's virtually just quiet. So um, his counsel was ineffective, and the Supreme Court ruled that he did have it. The Louisiana Supreme Court granted Harris a new hearing last month, and his legal team argued that his first attorney failed him by not challenging the sentence. Upon Derek's release, he will be moving to Kentucky with Antoine. It's a moment Antoine never lost hope. I'd get the hell out of there, too. He's still all shocked about this because I mean we've been working at this for a long time I'm trying to obtain his freedom and now finally it's tears so it's, it's it's a bit overwhelming you know for him as well as us in Abbeville Iman Boyd KTC TV3 can you guys believe that man Thir a life sentence over a $30 marijuana sale the guy was a veteran you're kidding me man <laughs> And then, uh, I guess under the 2012 uh, habitual offender law that he was given the life. You know, this country is, you know what, there's a lot of good points to be protesting, but on the other hand, you schlucks always screw it up. Anyway, let's go to Corey Graff's wall of shame. Yes, Corey Graff's wall of shame. Meridian police officer arrested for DUI in Orange Beach. Let's take a From listen. East Mississippi has resigned after being let out of jail this morning. He was arrested in Orange Beach for a DUI. Meridian Police Lieutenant John Griffith was driving to Orange Beach when police started getting calls about a reckless driver on the Foley Beach Express. Officers caught up with Griffith near Canal Road. He refused to take a breathalyzer test and was arrested for driving under the influence. Griffith was the Meridian Police Department was with them for nearly, or excuse me, more than two decades. Wow, two decades. And Lieutenant John Griffith, you're in the Corey Grass Wall of Shame. You shouldn't be drinking and driving. You can hurt somebody. Not cool. Now, let's go over to our thing that I was talking about over in Chicago. Uh, that sucker ain't loading again. Let's see here. Come on. You're killing my show here. I'm oh, just going to have to freaking read this thing. Chicago looting triggers over 100 arrests, 13 officers hurt, as mayor warns criminals, we are coming for you. Get out of here. You've been, you, yeah, whatever. We're not going to let our city be taken over by criminals and vigilantes, Lightfoot said. You're a schmuck. You've been encouraging it. Who the hell are you fooling, man? You're just over national news now and you look really stupid. Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot slammed looters and rioters who descended upon the uh, downtown area early Monday morning calling the uh, overnight events an assault on our city and telling criminals we are coming for you. Okay, are you going to let, uh, you know what, me, I'm not a real big supporter of uh, the guys in blue, but are you going to let them do their jobs? Give them some rubber bullets, give them some tear gas, and get, let them give them a spanking. They, need, they deserve it, these people. We are waking up in shock this morning. These individuals engage what can only be described as brazen and extensive criminal looting and destruction. And to be clear, this had to nothing to do with legitimate protected First Amendment expression. <laughs> I bet, oh, uh, what's his name, uh, BLM looters in Chicago broke into a desolate dealership. That ain't cool, man. 
Uh, we are not going to let our city be taken over by criminals and vigilantes. You already have, man. You already have. Who do you fool in? Oh, wait a second. It'd be those idiots that vote for you. That's who you're trying to fool again. Car caravans of looters made their way into Chicago's magnificent mile. Gold Coast and Irving North neighborhoods. Oh, man, Irving North. And neighboring commercial districts overnight, which officials believe was spurred by a police-involved shooting in Inglewood earlier in the day. It's a freaking war zone out there. That stuff happens all the time. You know, people are getting shot all... Yeah, bull with the cause. At the scene of the South Side shooting, tempers flared, fueled by misinformation as the afternoon turned into evening. Yeah, misinformation, but hey, let them out the gates. CPD uh, became aware of several social media posts encouraging looting downtown. Oh yeah, let's just follow the leader. That's the way they think. Uh, chaos and destruction unfolded over the next several hours as several posts of social media show looters break it into high-end stores, including Saks Fifth Ave and Tesla, with many using anything they can, even at least one case a car, to do so. My God. Let's see what we got. Put that we got in, it, man. Man. Well, there they are, breaking into it. Let's get going. Open the gates. Oh yeah, this is peaceful protesting. Yay! Yay! Freaking morons. Yes, I was watching them bust into the thing, and if you're over on the radio, check it out. Uh, this was not an organized protest, rather than an uh, incident of pure criminality. Uh, the city kept many of its Chicago River bridges up in an effort to contain the looting. Uh, basically, if those bridges are up, you ain't getting into downtown, but they did it uh, too late. Too late, but more on... Uh, you know, hold on a second. It looks like we got one from the Apple here. It does seem to be... Uh, for the most part, the people have been pulling up in vehicles. That's what we saw a short time ago. And this is the just sickening. He had seen sickening. This morning as well. Let's I'm go to my sure final thoughts. Guys, Carrie here from Beggar Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Mwah. Yay! They broke the window with the car! Yay! Don't I racist, guys? I, I, you know what? I just want to ask that question. Let me get a poll. Am I racist? Because I call out this kind of foolishness. These pecker pullers are on video crashing a damn car through a window. And they're using that as peaceful protests all around the country. Oh, wait a second. Riots don't exist. You know, I know this has been kind of a political show, but hey, this is something bikers need to talk about, man. We really do, because everybody looks to us. Have you noticed it's been bikers on the front lines mostly on this deal? Knocking the hell out of this one, knocking the hell out of that one. That's because bikers are patriotic, and cops, you should be thinking bikers. You know how many damn freaking stories I've seen where bikers are holding blue, uh, rallies or whatever the hell they call them uh standing up for you guys but no you guys can't be grateful you still have to go after clubs and you still have to go after bikers hey what you know what with the sturges freaking statistics this in point why couldn't you just give warning tickets i get the duis throw them throw those assholes behind bars because i can't stand duis but little infractions here little infractions there you can't give them a break these are the guys protecting yes. You know, you might, you know, want to admit that. Kind of like that story out west when you said, oh, we didn't need the uh, Bago's help. Bull crap, you didn't. You needed them all the way. Because you were just sitting there with your peckers in your hands. Because your bosses tell you you can't do nothing. So, bikers stepped up. But, back to my question. Everybody's calling me a racist. Okay, okay, I'll have to wear that. But hey, 
I'm not one of them are, that are afraid to be called that when I call out people like this. The problem with this country is people are afraid to be called racist. They're afraid to be proud of who they are. Not me. I ain't afraid. Nope, 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 nope. Not me. I'm going to speak on the subject. I'll speak it openly. And if you like it, cool. If you don't, pull your pecker and get the hell out of here. That's what I can tell you. Because this ain't the kind of show for you. If you can't hear both sides of the story and you're one of them ignorant ones who only like their stories from propaganda, again, this is not for you. Nope. Not going to be. I refuse to sit back and be quiet. I refused to kneel like them liberal whiteies. Nope, not gonna happen. I only kneel to the man upstairs himself. That's it. I kneel to anybody else. Never. And I sure to hell am not gonna sit here and be quiet when the city I grew up in is getting ransacked by these morons. Well, there was rumors of a shooting in Englewood. Man, you know how many shootings are in Englewood a day? That's one of the main freaking hot spots for Shy Rock. They do it because they want to do it. It's not protesting. They want to go out there and be schlucks. They want to go loot everything. And then the city of Chicago makes it so damn hard for people to own a gun, they can't protect themselves. And then you have incidences like Portland where people are living fear in their own house. Why? Because of your policies. You made it to where people have to depend on you people. And you got schlucks who follow you, who vote for you. And I have to ask, I do, what the hell is with you unions? The iron workers, the teamsters, what the hell is wrong with you people? You know, you got a lot of support out there, but you're, you're letting your bosses be schlucks and donate to these idiots election after election like it's helping you. It's making you look stupid and have people not support your cause anymore. Union support is at an all-time low am among the American public. The days of Jimmy Hoffa are surely gone, I can tell you that. And it's your fault. And the reason why I say it's your fault, because you put these union bosses in there, they use your membership money to give to these leftist, socialist, communist BSers, and you look stupid. You are supporting a party that allows riots, like you just seen in Chicago. They allow kids to think socialism's good. Last time I checked, you know, in socialism and in communism, you all make the same set wage. You know, what is it? Coal miners make so much in Russia. Uh, if you're a teacher, you make so much. That don't sound too much union to me, man. Nope, 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 nope. They're going to tell you to shove that rat up your ass is what they're going to do. You're going to make this much and that's it. So what you going to do when that kind of theology takes over? Because God forbid when you see the polls with these young kids that are going to be the future uh, leaders are going to turn this country into hell unless something is done right now. You just had the Black Caucus or whatever the hell they're called come out and say, Hey Biden, you're not going to win unless you do this. You have to appoint a black woman. I guess uh, experience doesn't matter. I guess qualification doesn't matter. It's all based on race. Yep, it's all based on that. And just think, these are the schlucks if they win have to go against somebody like Putin <laughs> or Xi. Really? They're going to walk all over them. Well, wait a second. You know, we already know old uh, dude with dementia. You know, he gets a lot of money out of China. You know, the one that put us in this mess, by the way. Anyway, enough on that. Let's go to some of the stories. Uh, the first one, the podcast, it sounds like it's going to be like a storybook type of deal. Uh, it, it, 
I don't get it, man. If you're in witness uh, protection, why are you going to come out and tell your story? Of course, it has been 40 years, so why hide anymore? Because people ain't like they used to be. Uh, but it's kind of stupid. You know, if you want to listen to it, listen to it. Uh, I ain't saying nothing. I think it's just stupid. I'd be pretty pissed up in uh, Canada right now with 50 G's missing uh, and all that money. Boy, man. You imagine that? You know, they come busting in, take your crap. Man, that would suck. <laughs> you know how much work we put in for that? You know, that kind of stuff. But that's government, man. The only reason why this stuff's illegal is so, because they you don't make no money on it. You would have thought that the government would have learned during the prohibition days that that just does not work you are actually inciting more crime you're inciting more murder by your policies that drug war that was a joke wasn't it don't do drugs this is your brain on drugs but alcohol and cigarettes are all right you know, it, it's it's the pharmaceutical companies that run this country. It's always been that way. Uh, back to Sturges, though. They sit there and talk about how much money they make. Setting people undercover for to get their sales tax. Why would you even want to do business and, you know, kick back to them kind of people? That's legalized freaking loan sharking right there. They're sending out their freaking enforcers to come get their money. So again, would somebody please tell me why the hell you want to go to a rally and support them people? You know, I know I've been asking a lot of questions, but I'd like to get some answers on this type of stuff. Also, uh, I will be doing more moto vlogging. Got a bunch of cameras. I got to get it set up on the fat boy, but they will be coming. You know, I know I said I'd be doing more of that, but hey, I, you know, I've been busy with the radio show a lot. Uh, that's going to be kicking off pretty soon, and boy, the licensing fees, man. You guys might have just bent somebody over, put your pants to your ankles, and just go for it, man, because that's what about you do with them freaking licensing fees. Jesus Christ. Lots of money to play the radio, what we're going to be going for you guys, man. Lots of money to play that stuff, uh, but I don't want to play no BS music on there, man. I want to play some good stuff. Uh, if you have any suggestions on bands, shoot that to me, man. That'd be cool what you want to listen to, uh, but it's going to be a 24-hour deal. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the show and all that type of stuff. Leave the comments in the comment section. Let's get a debate going, man, because this is like getting stupid if you ask me. Uh, until then, I'll talk to you guys later. Be good. Well, not so good. <laughs> talk to you guys later. I said goodbye. See you Bad later, news. man. Adios. Ciao. Tell them, Fred. So Get your hat. So you want to know how to support the show? Go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts. The rock on hats are embroidered. Get your exclusive merchandise now. Rock on. Don't forget to go over to HarleyLiberty.com. Get all your motorcycle club news. What's happening in the scene? We have a new article or articles every single day over at HarleyLiberty.com. And don't forget the sister site, BikerLifestyleMagazine.com. If you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycling news, motorcycle rallies and bikers helping the community, motorcycle club editorials and more. And don't forget to visit us on Facebook. Get involved in the conversation. Watch videos done a Motorcycle Madhouse and more. Also, we have Instagram. Yes, Instagram. We have material that is not seen anywhere else. So don't forget, get on our platforms, check out your daily biker news. Rock on! Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel top of the notch all the beggars bikers and brotherhood and ladies don't you worry we didn't forget about you check it out at beggars syndicatecycles.com yo show is now available on spotify and all major platforms including iHeartRadio, radio itunes stitcher and more don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our 
YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the throttle today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!